Hello friends, welcome to the Coding Interviews channel. Hope you are doing great. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please go ahead and subscribe. I have created a bunch of playlists to cover various categories of problems dealing with stacks, queues, linked lists, trees, graphs. And also there are several playlists to cover various, pat various programming paradigms such as dynamic programming, BFS, DFS, greedy method and so on. Please check them out. I have uploaded the code for this problem to the GitHub repository. You can get the link from description of this video. Let's jump into today's problem. Least number of unique integers after k removals. Given an array of integers and an integer k, find the least number of unique integers after removing exactly k elements. So we are given with two inputs. One is an array of integers and an integer k. Let's say the number of integers in the array is n, right? And we are supposed to remove k elements. And our task is, what is the least number of unique integers possible after removing k elements, right? So that is what is our question is. So for example, uh, let's go with the example one, five, five, four, and k is equal to one is given, right? So in that case, five, five, four, there are three elements. We are supposed to remove one of the elements, right? So let's say if you remove five, how many unique elements will be there? Five and four, right? There are still two in unique elements will be there. But what if we remove four? There will be only one unique integer, right? Even though there will be two fives, we are talking about unique integers, right? So five, five, both are same. So we will count only one unique integer, right? That is five, right? So in that particular case, if we remove four, we will be ending up with one unique integer, right? So, but how to choose four instead of five, right? That is the that is what the uh, trick here that we need to do, right? So let's look, go ahead and look at one more example to understand it in a better way, right? So now, uh, there's, a, there's a, another array, 4, 3, 1, 1, 3, 3, 2, 4, right? So in this case, k is equal to 1 again. So I am allowed to remove one element, but how many choices that we have in this particular case? There are eight elements and four unique choices, right? So four unique choices, you can remove one, two, three, or four, but any of them, any of any one of them you can remove and how, how many unique elements are possible. So in this particular case, there are four unique elements, right? One, two, three, and four. Out of which, if we remove one, how many unique elements are possible, right? If we remove four, for example, the four, right? This one, there will be still four unique elements. So there is no change. If we remove three, still there is no change. If there is, if we remove one, right? Still there is no change because there is one available. If we remove two, right? There will be only one, three and four. That's it, right? In that particular case, what we have to remove? We need to remove two, right? So that these two examples should tell you something. That means what we are going to do is we will start with the number to be deleted which occurred least number of times, right? So we will remove the number which occurred least number of times. We will start there and we will be removing k such elements, right? So we, if let's say if k were equal to three, right? If k were equal to three, for example. So to start with, I will remove two, right? To start with, I'll remove two. So how many more I need to remove? Two more. So out of two more, I could take off two fours or two ones, right? Even if I take off two four, two ones, it'll be same because if I take two fours, right? Two elements remain, three and one. If I take, take off two ones, two elements remain, four and three. So it doesn't matter what elements I need to, I remove, right? In case of k is equal to three for this particular array. So the, the trick is to remove the numbers which starts with least number of occurrences, right? So that is the uh, trick that we are going to use to solve this particular problem. So for this case, we need to count the number of occurrences of each integer, right? So I have created a map here and this for loop is going to count the number of occurrences for each element. So that means, for example, this one, right? If, we, if I were to do the map, right? So it's four, how many times it is two, right? And 
3 how many times it's 3 times and 2 how many times it is 1 and 1 how many times it is 3 right how 1 is actually 2 times right yes so now we have this map what we said is we will start with the least number of occurrences right so if we sort this sort it sort the map right sort the map that's what we are going to do so once i sort the map by the number of occurrences right 2 1 and it could be 4 2 1 2 and 3 3 that's what it is said, right? So, 4 occur 2 times and 1 also occur 2 times, right? In this array, right? In this array. So, this is the sorted map. Now, we are going to remove k times, right? So, if k is equal to 3, we remove this and we remove this. That will be 3 elements, right? That's it. So, how many elements remain? 2 elements. That's what we are going to have. So, now that we have prepared this map, we are sorting this map. So, this is what is sorting, right? So, this will sort by the number of occurrences, sort by num occurrences, right? And then I initialize the map count uh, answer to the map count, right? So, that is the total number of elements available. So, now we I start removing k elements. So, for each element, uh, for each uh, element in the map i am going through and see if it is less than or equal to k if it is less than or equal to k right just remove that many values from k and remove uh, decrement the answer why am, why are you decrementing the answer by one because the, those type of elements are gone now right that's why we are decrementing the answer by one so otherwise you just break it out so that many element whatever the answer that you have that is the answer we are going to return so basically we will remove that many or k many elements and come up with the least number of unique integers right so this is a the trick here is to count the number of occurrences and sort them in the order of number of occurrences so once you know that the problem becomes pretty simple to understand right so let's go ahead and look at the time and space complexity for this time and space right so time so here we are going through this complete array one time right so we are saying the number of elements in the array we started with n right so there will be n integers right so that means to start with we took order of n time plus we are not done yet so we are going through the map now right we are not going through the array anymore we are going through the map so how many um, elements in the map are there we don't know that right but worst case how many elements could be there if, an, if a given array is, let's say if the given array is uh, like this, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, in that particular case, what we'll say? Okay, 1 occurred once, 2 occurred once, 3 occurred once, 4 occurred once, 5 occurred once, right? So, that means it is equal to the number of elements in the array also. So, worst case will be order of n, right? Right. But, are we going through all the elements here? Not really only until k elements but what if k is equal to n right still the say this will be holding good right so order of n plus order of n will be equal to the order of 2n but we are going to remove all the constants from the big o notation we will say final complexity is order of n so let's go look at the space complexity now so are we using any extra space here yes we are using extra space to calculate the number of occurrences right so, how many number of occurrences uh, we said? So, in the worst case, the map will have n elements. That's what we said, right? For this example. So, space is also order of n. We are using, right? Apart from that space, we are not using anything. But, when we talked about the time complexity, we just calculated the time complexity for, for each here and for each here. There is an important thing that we did not consider, which is, this statement the sorting statement right that is an important one how much a sorting would take if there are n elements the sorting would take n log n the best sort right n log n right so the total time complexity in this particular case we would say is order of n plus order of n log n normally order of n will be less than order of n log n that is why we would say the total complexity is order of n log n right so time complexity is order of n log n 
on the whole and space complexity is order of n. If you have any further questions, please post them in the comment section below this video. I will get back to you as soon as I can. I have posted this code to the GitLab, GitHub repository. You can find the link in the descrip description section of this video below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please go ahead and subscribe and share among your friends. Please click on the bell icon so that you will be notified about my future videos. Thank you for watching. I will be back with another problem soon. Till then, stay safe and goodbye.